Welcome to Insight, produced in partnership with Valley PBS. Today we are chatting with Katie Meter, Executive Director of Family Services of Tulare County. Katie has generously agreed to share some of her experience with us. I'd like to thank you, Katie, for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. Family services and the range of family services that you provide is truly astounding. Talk about that range. Family Services was founded in 1983. We're an independent nonprofit organization, and we were founded with the hope of creating a domestic violence shelter for women and children in Tulare County who were fleeing abuse in the home. And over the years, over the last 35 years, we have grown substantially uh, to offer not only victim services for victims of domestic violence, sexual assault, human trafficking, but also other services for individuals and families who are are in crisis and uh, need greater access to physical and emotional safety. So things like counseling services and supervised visitation services, uh, housing. So we've really um, grown and diversified a lot over the last 35 years. So when these organizations are started, very often they are started on the back of a crisis mm -hmm. uh, where women who are suffering domestic violence need a safe place to escape to. Mm -hmm. And so you have this, this issue of, of addressing an immediate need, but immediate need is not a solution. How, do you, how does that inform how you have developed your services so that you address immediate needs, but also long-term solutions? Mm -hmm. So Family Services started with this idea of a crisis shelter uh, exactly for that reason. We had community members that um, had themselves experienced as a group of friends the uh, loss of a friend who had been killed by her uh, estranged husband. And this was in the late 70s. So at that time, really, you saw this movement um, of shelter mobilization across the country. And, and a shelter is a network. It's basically people who say, if there is somebody in need, I will take that mm -hmm. person in. At that time, it certainly was. And I think this group of folks really saw a need for a permanent place uh, that women and children could go. And so they worked together to open what we now call Karen's House. And so that is a you know 30 to 90 day emergency shelter, uh, much like Marjorie Mason Center in Fresno, uh, where we can deal with the immediate crisis. So establishing safety, uh, offering services like case management and counseling, um, and even simple things like food, uh, just the basic necessities. And what we've really seen over the years is the need to continue on uh, that work because 30 days is a, a pretty quick turnaround when you're coming from a crisis and, and trying to move forward uh, on and your own. And it's never intended to be anything more than a temporary refuge to, to basically create, a, create a, a shell of safety, to take a breath, give the child, the, the parent, mostly women or women, um, a, a, a way to, to stop and think first in safety. Absolutely, and we do know the research shows us, and, and we've certainly seen this to be true in Tulare County, that those first three months following a separation of a relationship where there is domestic violence, that is what we call the danger window. Um, and so we really, that is what the shelter is there to do, is to provide safety, um, both in the form of confidential location, but also that opportunity, like you said, to sit down, to breathe, to think things through uh, from a safe perspective about what next steps look like. Uh, so to continue that work, we've also opened transitional housing programs for victims where they can stay for longer periods of time, um, up to two years, which is a little more time to uh, go back to school or get reintegrated back into the workforce, as well as uh, we have survivors that uh, may have a permanent disability or a child with a disabling condition um, or who've been chronically homeless because of their domestic violence and maybe need a longer term solution. So we've also started offering permanent housing uh, which is exactly what it sounds. It's really just they stay for as long as they need to and a lot of times are able to move on. Talk about how you are organized programmatically. 
Mm. So we have eight different programs uh, and we are now, we've grown substantially even just in the past five years. Uh, when I joined the organization about six and a half years ago, uh, we were about a $3.2 million budget um, with this you know, grouping of programs and we're, we're more than double that now with 115 employees. So um, we're actually spread out over um, a large uh, swath of, of buildings and, um, and really what I think is unique about our organization and makes me proud of some of the work that we're doing is that we really have pushed ourselves to bring the work out into the community. So Tulare County is very large geographically and we know that not everybody can get into Visalia where we are primarily based. So we have therapists, we have advocates who actually go out, especially into our rural communities. We're co-located at family resource centers, at uh, the sheriff's office. So we really try to bring our services to where people are and in these natural settings where they might access them. And it's important that, that these services get integrated into communities because if you make women invisible, if you make the problem invisible, you assign ownership to someone else. But if it's a problem that we all own, then we have to deal with it. Absolutely, and we really have started to talk about it in those terms that, uh, yes, we understand that people often frame, especially domestic violence, but a lot of family traumas as you know, a family issue or a personal matter that's between partners, but really it is a community issue um, from a public health perspective, from a safety perspective. I think we've seen that, um, the connection, unfortunately, uh, to uh, mass acts of violence and how those are very much connected to domestic violence and so there really is a vested interest, I think, on the behalf of the community to um, support these families um, and, and help them to achieve a greater level of safety. So you've talked about the protective piece, which is immediate, um, it is short term, it, it leads to other type of planning. You've talked about the housing piece. Um, now, we also have some other aspects. There's, there's, uh, there ha there's mental health, and there's physical health care. Talk about those aspects. So we do offer mental health care in the form of our community counseling center. All of what we do is grant funded. So we do not accept Medi-Cal. It's not really um, the basis of our work, uh, but really we are uh, out there trying to reach victims of crime because that is a very specific type of, of um, treatment. And uh, we want to be able to help them address their trauma uh, in a way that is um, evidence-based and uh, appropriate. So we do offer individual and group counseling services, but we also offer um, offender services. So we are working with perpetrators of violence uh, in group settings, both uh, in our offices as well as in Tulare County Correctional Facilities, uh, really trying to address the issue, especially of domestic violence um, and other types of family abuse from, from both sides. How did you get involved personally in this? Mm. I knew that I wanted to work with women in particular, and so I was getting my undergraduate in social work, and I was placed for my senior internship at a domestic violence shelter, and I just absolutely loved it. Um, every day is different, uh, and I, I felt like I had found the right place for me, so that's really been my trajectory. So let's, let's excavate a little bit. Mm. How can you love a situation where everyone you see has undergone a traumatic experience? I say to my team, you know, we have to see people at their worst. That's part of our job. But we also get to see them at their best. And really, when you see someone who has overcome a hurdle or who has found a new level of healing, those are the days that it makes it worth it uh, because it is, it is traumatic, but I just think about what would I want for my children or my family member, a friend who was going through this. I would want somebody uh, who, who cared enough about them to show up every day and do the work. So that's what we try to do. In terms of, of your interactions with first responders, what kind of experience have you had because that is in and of itself as a first responder to deal with domestic violence is an extraordinarily uh, stressful um, situation to come into and very often where there are no uh, clear cut and dried answers. Mm -hmm. 
I think we have seen some tremendous collaboration and partnership in our community in the last year. Um, I was mentioning earlier, we uh, worked with our Tulare County Sheriff's Office, our Tulare County District Attorney and probation to form our domestic violence high risk team in Tulare County. It's something we're really proud of. I, I think of all the things I've done in my career, that is definitely um, at the top of the list as and far as- the high as risk is, is identified by repeat offenders. The Sheriff's Office, on every call they go out on, every domestic violence call, they use a validated tool to assess for risk. And we're really looking to pull out those cases that are at highest risk for escalating to a lethal level of violence. So lethal we're- Lethal meaning murder. Right. That is ultimately our goal, is to uh, decrease and ultimately eliminate the number of domestic violence homicides that we are seeing in our community. Unfortunately, uh, 2017 was a terrible year for Tulare County. We had quite a few uh, domestic violence homicides as well as three murder suicides just in 2017. Uh, so we really worked with the Tulare County Sheriff's Office, our district attorney's office and probation to come together to say there's got to be another way to look at these cases so that we can pull out and identify those that are at the highest risk for escalating to a lethal place, to a murder, uh, and intervening in those cases before they become deadly. So that's what we've done. It took almost a year to launch and uh, we trained every single one of our Tulare County Sheriff's officers. And so now every time they go out on a call, they actually administer a danger assessment with a victim, asking them these questions about past violence as well. And if they uh, answer affirmatively to enough of those questions, it identifies them as high risk. And so they will, that officer will reflect back to them that they are very concerned for their safety and, and really encouraging them to get immediate assistance. But beyond that, uh, that, uh, risk assessment then comes into our team and our team is constantly reviewing those cases together and really it's we want to cut out those cases where you know we can look back at domestic violence homicides and say oh if I had known this I might have done things differently or the system says you know law enforcement says if we had known this we might have responded differently and so it's really sharing that information as a team in real time to create one unified plan um, of intervention and so far we're really overwhelmed with the results we have not had another homicide since our team launched last October so uh, it's really quite remarkable and we're proud because Tulare County little old Tulare County is the the first to do a full-scale implementation of this anywhere on the West Coast. So uh, we're, we're very proud of, of trying something new and I think that really speaks to the courage of our community, the courage of our leaders to step up and say, well, just we can't arrest our way out of this. And so uh, we need to look at other ways to, to really intervene in those highest risk cases. Katie Meter, thank you so much thank for sharing Thank you so much for having me. Of the organization and thank you so much thank for you. your insights. Mm -hmm.